Scouting your fields is one of those jobs we talk about as $100 an hour jobs. They are incredibly important. I mean, it is incredibly important to be out in your field on a regular basis. And one of the main reasons why is bugs. If you have bugs show up in your field and they're harmful bugs, you want to get them under control. I talk to people all the time and say, okay, I want to scout my fields more this year, but what should I be looking for at different stages? So here's some of the bugs you may look for in a variety of different crops here early this season. All right, let's start in corn. Cutworm usually shows up real early in the season. You want to be scouting as soon as that corn is popping out of the ground. I mean, literally day one, you might have cutworms feeding on your plants. But what time of day, Brian? This is the challenge. If you go out in yep. the heat of the day, you're not going to see the cutworms. It's not just cutworms, but there are a lot of other insects you might not see either. So that's why you want to vary your scouting times because some of these bugs are only going to be out in the dark. But anyway, with the cutworms or any bug, if you see feeding, you see damage onto the plant, try to figure out what bug it is. And that may mean staying out till all hours of the night just to see what bugs you actually have in the field. So a lot of times you'll hear people talk about the threshold being, well, if 3% of the plants are cut in the field, then you can go after them. Or if 10% of the plants are cut in the field, I'll hear some people say, and I think, are you kidding me? I've got 30,000 plants per acre. That's it. Yeah, but If I have 3,000 of them laying on the ground, that's trouble. That's true. But here's the good thing with corn. The growing point is well below the soil surface when that corn is just popping out. So you can have a little bit of feeding and it doesn't hurt a lot. And that's one of the challenging things is how much feeding can I really have before it justifies treatment? But here's what I want you to think about. It now costs $2 to use a full rate of a pyrethroid insect side or maybe four dollars of say a pint of Lorsban. Those are your two main choices and they're both dirt cheap. So on our own farm here's what we commonly do. We go out and we spray herbicide real early. It might be V1, V2 in corn or in any of these other crops and we just hit the outside four rows and the outside four rows right around all the waterways and we spray herbicide and insecticide. Well now we've not spent nearly as much money and we've done a lot of good. Let's turn to soybeans because you talk about well that early feeding on corn it's just leaf tissue it's not the biggest deal. If we've got something like bean leaf beetles out in soybeans there may only be two leaves and it may be the cotyledon leaves and if we clip yeah. that off our plant is dead. Well that's true but here's what I worry more about than anything with bean leaf beetles and some of these other bugs is injecting disease. When you have bean leaf beetle feeding you have more likelihood of bean pod model virus and there may be some other diseases that get in too. The good news is a lot of the seed treatments do pretty well on early season bean leaf beetles otherwise again you get the same options pyrethroid or lorsban. Let me throw a bug at you in wheat. We see a lot of different types of aphids depending on where yep. we're at in the country in wheat and they're piercing and sucking insects. They're biting into those wheat leaves and I hear guys all the time, hey I'm going to spray a fungicide early in my wheat. Yeah. Don't forget about the insecticide right. because if you've got all those little puncture wounds you're going to see even more disease pressure. Exactly. Now Lorsban's a little bit better on aphids than the pyrethroids but the Lorsban adds a little more burn. So if you're spraying a fungicide and a herbicide and you say oh I got enough leaf burn already I don't really want to throw Lorsban in. The pyrethroid will be fine. How about alfalfa because so many times that first cutting is just in terrible jeopardy due to bugs. Well the problem is you got to get out there and scout before you're ready to do that first cutting. You can't be out there and go uh oh I got all kinds of bugs. No you're too late. Pre-harvest interval is seven days maybe 14 days depending on the insecticide you want to use and there are a lot of early season bugs that can affect the alfalfa crop. Well, you talk about alfalfa, alfalfa weevils. Alfalfa weevil larvae. Exactly. Yeah, the larvae early in the season and the good news here is both Pyrethroids and Lorsban are good on those early season cutworm type or worm type bugs. Where is it that you want to switch modes of action? Because we hear talk about the neonics coming out post emerge yeah, and also a little talk about Lorsban. Yeah, too. We, we're not big on spraying neonics post emerge. We're worried about bee kills. Let's save the neonics for seed treatments. That's where we really need them. The other thing is, in terms of rotating modes of action, if you're spraying once per year, it's no big deal. But when you start spraying eight times per year, then it's a really big Big deal. So then you got to work with an agronomist. Maybe you're going to need more than just the pyrethroid and the organophosphate lorsban. Okay, the other thing is just hey, crop prices have changed dramatically over the last couple of yep. years. How do I figure my economic threshold well, and keep what in it mind, is today? A lot of the economic thresholds are from 10 or 20 years ago before the crop prices ever ran up in the first place. So you can use 
uh, numbers off your own farm, look at your yield goal, look at your price, look at your cost for the insecticide, look at your cost for the actual spraying. I know on our own farm, we do not have to see many bugs before we can justify treatment. Then the last thing I would say is when you're out spraying for bugs, if you've got a heavy bug infestation in your field, chances are disease might not be too far behind it. So if you're spraying for disease, watch for the bugs that are out there. If you're spraying for bugs, think about having some disease protection at the same time. If you can apply a really inexpensive product, uh, like Equation, for example, well, if you can do that for just a few dollars, that's cheaper than another trip across the field that you might have to make later. Well, once again, it is important to be out there scouting for bugs, but it's also important to scout for weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 